Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 71 of the 100 Days of Zen Tangle Project 2020. Thank you all so much for being with me for this awesome ride this year. Our tangle today is going to be Flevo. It is by Mariette Lustenhauer, uh, and I'm not sure if I said that right, so forgive me if I messed it up. This is a shout out to all of my people and followers in the Netherlands. All right. So Flevo is fairly dynamic because it uses striping as is part of its example. I've got one example of how you can do it on the top and a different one down here. So um, what I love about this tangle is that it's got a lot of organic qualities and you can mush it up, turn it around, set it on its head, embellish it differently, do all kinds of different things with this. It's about as close to organic as you can get, I think. And so let's step it out. The step out, uh, I've got a, um, I've got the link here for you. So this is a pretty, a pretty cool ribbon tangle that is also very organic in its qualities and so of course I love it and the striping gives it a really cool quality. Uh, I've got one version here and another version here and of course this is my example quality so it's not the best thing but I started drawing it the the uh, step out looks a little on the surface looks a bit complex however as I started drawing it, I just fell in love with it. And, you know, I sort of jumped right in and with my pen and and I kept thinking, oh, that can't be right. But no, it was right. So it's not too hard. Let me show you how this goes. I'm actually really excited because there are a bunch of possibilities. So I'm going to be using this tan cardstock um, from the uh, US Cardstock Company, I think is the name of it. Uh, I'll have to look. And uh, I think I showed it to you uh, before. And this is their brown paper bag uh, version of cardstock. So uh, I'm also going to use one of my new brown PNs. And I'm going to have a very, very fun time with this. Okay, so let's step it out. What we need for this is a wavy line. To start okay and uh, we it can look however you like and depending on how you make your waves is going to make a difference on how the pattern looks that doesn't mean that it will be wrong or right it just means different okay so Just like that. The next step, we're going to ara this line. Remember to take your time and breathe. Especially when you ara. Those of you in my shaky hands club, I didn't want it to be a club, but it is. Breathe deeply as you do these. R lines can be difficult for those of us that are shaky. And so if you don't take your time, then you end up with different widths. And uh, it's always a nice, pleasing result to take your time and do a careful one, okay? So that wasn't so hard, was it? All right. So what we're gonna do now is go into each one of these dips Yesterday it was, or the day before yesterday it was wells, and today it's dips. And we're going to make a little crescent moon type, um, little ladybug shape. And put it in there, just like this. Now if I zoom, <laughs> then I get out of frame. So we'll try to, we'll try to not do that. Okay, just like this. I'll get there. I'm ahead of myself. 
usually, usually I'm ahead of myself. I'm not a very patient person, at least not with myself, okay? So once you have a little crescent moon shape in each one of your dips on one side, then I want you to aura those. And these can be thin or thick, however you want to make them. Take your time. It takes as long as it takes, guys. Now I want you to turn uh, whatever you're drawing on 180 degrees. If I call it a tile, you'll just have to understand and we're going to do the same thing in the in the dips of this other side, okay? Now, there will occasionally be an opportunity for you to have it look like it's going from one to the other, but uh, as I found when I was playing for that, playing with this, is that it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter, so you can do it um, however you want, and you don't want these to be higher than these, okay? You want these to be shorter. So, let's see. Now, what I was going to say is that sometimes if you work it right, you can have these look like they're passing from one to the next. And I probably could have managed it here. But if you'll notice, now my the height on these is the same. Okay? And that's, gonna, that's going to cause us a bit of issue with the next step, all right? So let's go ahead and make these down in the dip, not too tall. And just let them be where they're going to be. It's the Celtic knotter in me that was wanting to uh, have those... Um, set up that way. And I suppose you could. Just like that, when I lucked out. Yeah. Okay. So now, that's it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to one of these dips, one of these little uh, crescent moon shaped aura, aura lines that we have down here. And we're going to make a curved line. Taking off straight up from here and then curving down to a gentle slope into your taller spot here. And this is why it's important. Now, I probably over-exaggerated that a little bit. Uh, let's make another one. So, um, this time... Now, okay, the reason, the reason that, I'm, that I'm sort of umming and awing here is because I like to draw these in one fluid stroke from one to the next. So the second part of this is to come back down here like this. And these bumps can be, you know, just as funky as you want to make them. It won't matter, okay? So let's try this another one and again. And this time, instead of stopping in the middle, I'm going to make a, go ahead and make both of these strokes sort of like a wavy line again. And I'm going to start right here and come straight up. Or not straight up, maybe, but like that. That's probably closer. Okay. And so this is what we're going to do all the way along here, okay? So on the little crescent moon shaped in the, that you drew into the dip, we're going to go up and slope down 
okay and so here's another one I'm gonna go up slope down and then I'm gonna come back down like this and that's the way I prefer to draw it it's just a little bit more flowy that's my word for today. Now, if you'll look here where this one is the same height, I guess it worked okay, sort of. You guys will play with this and you'll see, even though my shapes are sort of uh, different shapes, <laughs> my shapes are different shapes, uh, this is nothing new for me. Um, it's still going to work out just fine. And this is what I mean by it being rather organic in nature. It is going to, um, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I like that quality in it. Okay, so we're going to turn our tile or whatever we're drawing on upside down, 180 degrees. And we're going to do this again. We're going to start in the little crescent moons in the dips. We're going to glide, whoops, uh, see if I can do that glide right in there on the top of that slope curve back up and come down okay and they don't all have to look alike And one more. And so you're going to want to shoot for around the midpoint. And if you'll notice, I've left a tiny gap here. It doesn't matter if it comes to a point truly, but we're going to aura in here. And the, the more separation you have, the cooler the aura is going to look. Or rather, if you have some separation, the aura will look cooler. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm going to give a shout out today to my new disability aide. Her name is Maria. She is a single mom with two little boys and she is working it. Girl, thank you for being here for me. I appreciate you. Okay, so here there are two ways that we can handle this and I'm going to choose the way that I like. One way is to do your line work, your striping, so that it follows these crescent moon shapes in the middle, okay? So that the lines that you add in follow that. So, so excuse me, if we did it that way, that would mean I would follow this way with my striped lines, okay? So you would follow the curve of your crescent moon. Now, the other way, this way, which is, I think, the one I prefer, but I don't know. I really like them both a lot. Um, this way, you're going to want to go against that. So, okay, so the first time we went with the line on the, on the crescent moon. This time, we're going to follow the line of this initial wavy line, okay? And so that will go up this way against the crescent moon. Does that make sense? I hope, hopefully. Now, when I looked at this without stripes, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, almost flowers. And you can embellish this any way you like. If you don't even want to use stripes, you don't have to. But they are so dynamic that I'm definitely going to use them for me. The last step is going to be to aura this but I'm going to wait until I decide on my fill pattern before I do that because the aura ing is slightly different depending on some on uh, whether or not you're gonna put in uh, this version and have these connected in here because that's gonna make the aura look different. Now, I have to say that this aura that comes down and does a deep V in here is pretty cool looking, although. <laughs> but I haven't really decided which way I wanna go yet. So uh, let's figure it out. I think I'm going to do what's in the original step out and uh, do go 
do my striping with the line of the crescent moon that we drew into the dip. So I'm gonna start like that. So with the line, and just make some careful stripes. And you can stripe this as you go, or you can stripe it um, after you get finished. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. That sort of interrupts my flow with the lines. And take your time. You don't want too much of your ink to encroach on your um, beginning stroke there, like I'm struggling not to do. So, okay, so let's do this. And try to remember, go with the curve of the crescent moon if you're gonna do this version. Okay. With the curve of the crescent moon. It's not truly a crescent moon, of course, that's the name of the pattern. Um, okay, crescent moon. If you ever find yourself not sure where to start, just do, do my little crescent moon mantra. So you can see it's really not going to matter the shape or height of these bumps you put on there. Crescent moon. Okay. So that when we get done with this striping, it's going to look like these are waving from one to the next. So now flip your tile or whatever you're using and go again with the crescent moon. Follow the curve. Crescent moon. It is very easy to come out of the first round that you do the first section and come over here and do uh do it the opposite direction so keep in mind don't get confused and do it one way one time and the other way the other although you could i mean who am i to judge i am no one to judge And you may be starting to see the coolness appearing here. It's really quite simple. And this sort of uh, C shape is uh is what you're doing here s's and s shapes and c shapes although i'm not sure you can call this an s <laughs> oops wrong way crescent moon All right. 
let's say this way. Okay, so now, because uh, because we didn't do the version uh, that has the fill here, uh, the reason for that is because of the direction of the striping. If we did add an element here that was striped, it would get confusing with these stripes coming the same direction. So what we want to do in here is something uh, that will change the direction or look different. And so I think I'm going to stick with and add my Aura right now. And I'm going to shift this frequently so that my hand position stays comfortable. And when I come to a place where it's not comfortable anymore, I'm going to, to uh, position my tile so that it once again is. And these are just waves and dips. Now, isn't that a fun aura? Okay, wait till we get the stripes on here. You'll love it. Okay, we're gonna aura the other side. Now. Oh, I'm gonna turn this over so that I'm doing the same thing the same way. Okay, so not so bad. So it's a little overwhelming right now, but once we put our uh, inking in, it's going to look really cool. So the first thing on this version, I'm going to want to ink. And again, at this point, you guys can do whatever you wish to do. It is your playground. So make yourselves happy. What I'm, what I'm going to do to make myself happy is I'm going to um, ink in all of my little uh, almond shapes that we made by um, crossing these uh, wavy lines. And already you can tell that ink is going to make a great dramatic difference here.
All right. So this is where I'm at. This is more accurate as to the color. Um, again, this lamp washes it out quite a bit. Um, okay, now I'm going to stripe and sparkle as I go on these lines, okay? So I'm going to leave a space, of course, and then I'm gonna start on the next one up and I'm just gonna go for it. Remember, a sparkle is simply an absence of ink where you normally would have had some. Just like that, okay? We're gonna to want to put it on the apex of our curve. I don't think on this one it's gonna matter. Okay. Then I'm gonna move on to the next to the next section. This is another example of why you want to leave a little bit of a gap. Or when you ink, it'll all end up looking the same. Isn't that cool though? I, I just, as soon as I started drawing this, I just fell in love with it.
just going to go ahead and stripe this one since that's where we're at here. All right. Oops. Wow. <laughs> I skipped a whole section there. At least it's readily obvious, unlike those little orbs the other day on Cindy or All right, now we've got one side done. I think I'm going to sneak one in right up here. Sort of flesh that out a little bit. Okay. All right, so now 180 degree turn and keep going. We're almost to the fun part where we get to use our charcoal pencil and jelly roll and such, which is my favorite part. Isn't this fun though? Isn't this so much fun? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you guys are so kind to me. I don't know why, but I'm glad you are. I don't get nearly enough kindness. Bless you. Did you guys know that my little boy is going to be 11 years old in about a month and a half? That is crazy. Just yesterday, he was this cute little six-year-old with wide eyes and soft voice. Now he's a teenager pretending to be 10. And making his old Cindy tired. And I don't even know if anything's gonna be open around here for his birthday. And if it is open, I'm not sure how safe that's, that is, or if anybody would even come. I'm trying to think of some safe alternatives so that he doesn't have a bad birthday, because we don't want that. And I promised myself when he came here that I would try to make every single one of his birthdays special. His birthdays were frequently an afterthought before, and I really wanted him to have some good ones to remember. Even if I'm singing the I Have a Teenager Blues, <laughs> I still love my kid an awful lot. I'm not sure he still loves me, but I sure do love him. He'll probably love me again, love me again when he turns 25. <laughs> Thank you. 
Home stretch. You know, I don't know why blacking is is so onerous to me when striping is such fun. I really don't understand my my perspective on that. But I do enjoy striping. I think it's because you get an immediate cool effect from it. And it's instant gratification, maybe. This is, oh, I forgot to black ink this. Goodness, Cindy. For some reason, I am really phoning it in today. I can't seem to get a good sentence coming out. And uh, I'm just sort of, I don't know. cool I like it but what can we do to make this more finished um, you guys know what I'm gonna do and I don't know if this will detract what I do know I will probably add some little fescue or tendrils of some kind to sort of um, do something in here to sort of fill this out and make it complete. But before I do that, I want to fill this out and make it complete with my uh, jelly roll and my white charcoal pencil. If you don't have a white charcoal pencil, a white Prismacolor or a white co colored pencil uh, may work for you. Um, it just depends on the pencil, so um, I really can't predict how it will work, but uh, hopefully it will work fine. Okay, so this is my, what's left of my White Trickles and Tangle Pencils by Generals. It's a, that is a U.S. company, and uh, if you can't find these on Amazon, you can probably find these from Zentangle. In fact, I know you can. So I think what I'm gonna do is take my charcoal pencil and just go down the line where I have got these sparkled and add a, just a dash of bright white. And that's going to make it look amazing. And I am going to put this on the on the parts that are not striped because the highlight is going to be the same on all, whether it's striped or not. We just see them more when it's striped. Try hard not to get it on your brown ink uh, otherwise um, because it will dull it right down. Now, you can go over the charcoal with your black with your ink pen with with the understanding that it can gum up the nib so you're going to want to keep it wiped gently you know pretty often and of course that's the same with the prismacolor and and whatever you do um, if you're using ink over something you don't do not want to press down uh, I was reading an article on tangle patterns about the Sakura pins and how you could restart one that was not out of ink but that was not rolling and uh, 
it, the the technique I mean it's a cool it's a cool article so you should check it out but uh, I thought it was interesting because of the explanation that it gave for um, for how the microns worked and basically uh, they have um, they have the little uh, sort of uh, felt tip nib in there but uh, it's basically a hollow tube where where the ink just goes down into it and when you push down you're forcing something uh, other than ink up into that tube and it, and it causes the ink to stop being able to flow out if that makes sense so I sometimes think that understanding how something works help, helps you uh, better um, protect it. So uh, I thought I would share that with you guys. It's a really interesting article. But if you do encroach, this is something I can go over with uh, either an eraser, uh, which is my second choice. I would rather go over this with the ink pen. And before I do that, I'm going to wipe over that with my finger just to make sure I've got as much of that chalk off as possible. That way the, there's a less, um, less of a possibility of gumming up my micron. That happens less with the pens because the nibs are plastic. I'm not sure how I'm going to get this one to work. This is why you want those to line up. So now what do you think of this? Pretty, pretty neat, huh? Now I'm going to get my tortillon and very gently blend this out. Uh, not because it particularly, um, well just to smooth it out a little bit. to take off any harsh edges. Just gently go over it. You don't want to rub too much or you, you lose your big white blast there and that's sort of the point. And just soften it down just a little bit. Then you can always go back and add more. Now keep in mind when you store tiles that are that have uh, things like charcoal on them or pencil, a colored pencil for that matter, and you store them uh, like I do in a box uh, between uh, other tiles. Um, one thing you want to remember is that a lot of your stuff can get rubbed off uh, while you store it. And so if you want to avoid that, uh, what you can do is you can uh, get something called a sprayable fix it, or <laughs> a sprayable, a spray on fixative. And uh, in the U.S., uh, Krylon is one brand of spray-on fixative that you can get. Um, uh, but all countries have this. Um, it's something that you can spray on your artwork. It's sort of like, like a polyurethane type of a spray, but it's not polyurethane. But it will spray over your art. Once it's dry, then you are able to go back in. You can still erase and add elements if you wish but it will fix in place things like charcoal pencil that you don't want to be rubbed off. All right, so just something to think about. All right, I like this so much. So I am thinking of uh, rounding some of my edges here. I wanna go over this real quick. I don't want to use too much because I don't want to change the color of the ink. Remember these uh, colored microns, the more ink you use, the darker it will get. So it is possible to change the, the gradient of the color that you're using by using more. Okay, so I don't know what I want to do here. Let's round over here in the corner and see what happens. Okay, I do like that. 
I do like that. So I think I'm going to go through here and very carefully, very carefully, Cindy. This would be a short one, but it's just as long as all the rest. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure how much that helped me. <laughs> I'm going to have to give this some thought, guys. You guys go ahead and do yours and let me know what you have come up with to try on, on your edges or whatever you're working with. If you have decided to curve this or something, I definitely want to see those. Get funky with this. Let it be what it wants to be. If, you're, if your humps up here that you draw on get high, let them get high. If they get wide, get wide. Let this happen. It's, orga it's a very organic-like pattern, and so just let it happen. Don't be afraid of it. You can't get it wrong. Remember, no mistakes in zin blah, 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 blah. No mistakes in Zintangle. Unfortunately, Cindy makes mistakes with her voice all the time. All right, guys. This is day 71 of the 100 Days Project this year. I am so thrilled to have you with me, and I will see you back here tomorrow. So don't forget to check out this playlist. Don't forget to check out this video and subscribe if you have not. Thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.